Hi, I'm Pat McGuire, President of Trinity Washington University. I'm here with our President Emerita, Sister Margaret Clayton, and we're having a conversation with two presidents about our Trinity memories and our plans for the future. Sister Margaret, yes, thanks I... so much for being with us today. Well, I'm very happy to be here. You're having a big reunion this year. Oh, I am. I'm looking forward to it. I can't believe I've been out 70 years. Mm. Well, what was it like then? What brought you to Trinity in the first place? <laughs> the compulsion of my mother and father. <laughs> I wanted to go to Wellesley and Smith oh. and thought I could inveigle my parents to let me, but they said, no, any Catholic college you can go to for women. So my mother said, well, there's only one, and that's you should go to, and that's Trinity. Had so, you heard of Trinity before? I hadn't, but my mother uh, knew many Trinity alumni, and she was always very impressed with them, and thought that was a great, must be a great college. So that's where she thought I should end up, which I did. So you <clears throat> arrived, it was what, the fall of 1941? Fall of 1941. Um, I went down and saw my senator, uh, Senator Wagner, uh, the senior Wagner, and asked for a pass to Congress. And so I put down Margaret Clayton and party. And I was so glad I did that because in December, Pearl Harbor happened. Oh. I wanted to go down to Congress to see war declared. So I assembled my little party and we all uh, descended on Congress. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. So I heard war declared uh, in Congress um, against Japan, and it was an exciting time. Who was in your party? Was it other students? Other students, yeah, my, my best friends, Mary Dowling Daly, Betty Moran, oh. people you knew, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. we and were your elders. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't that exciting? Oh, it that was you were very there. exciting. Yeah. So my whole four years at Trinity yeah. were the war years. What was that like? Well, it was running down to Union Station almost every minute to wave goodbye yeah. to brothers, friends and seeing them go and wondering whether they'd ever come back. Mm -hmm. um, I was asked to be what they called defense chairman. Oh. So we sold bonds. Really? To, you know, we worked like we shined shoes. It sounds uh -huh. silly. We sold candy, we did everything. And with the money we would buy bonds. And one of my greatest pleasures was when I was president, I saw those bonds coming to fruition and could admit students on scholarships on those bonds that I had helped to, you know, do. I never student. heard that. That's wonderful. It what was really exciting. That is a remarkable story. Mm -hmm. Did you know any of the soldiers who went off to war? Oh yeah, I knew a, yeah. knew a lot of them. Yeah, and of course my brother uh, went off to war. He was in the Naval Air Corps. Yeah. So. Yeah. It was, it was sad. Yeah. Uh, and as I say, you couldn't help wondering, will we ever see one another again? Right. Mm -hmm. So today, as we're talking. Is V V E Day? I know it. May eighth. It's the seventieth anniversary of it. the great day, and it was a day when I was taking comprehensives. You were uh, in forty five May eighth. The whole senior class went to O'Connor, and each department 
distributed their comps. And then in the middle of our taking our comprehensives, all of a sudden the, the whistles blew and the bells started to ring. We all looked up at one another and smiled and knew that it was over, and except for Japan. But the war in Europe was over. And then we went back to our Oh, they didn't just end your no, exam. Then. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But you did rather well. Was that an English comp that you were taking? Yes. Uh -huh. And you did okay, I think. I, I passed. You passed. <laughs> <laughs> did the end of the war change anything at Trinity? Well, of course, I left as, uh, you know, I graduated um, in May of 45. But I know. Um, when my sister was here, um, you know, it was, a, I think it was a much different, a much more carefree, mm -hmm. happy time. Mm -hmm. um, more tea dances and dates with Georgetown and Catholic and everything, whereas by our senior year there were no men <laughs> that were not 4F <laughs> around. Oh dear. Yeah. So after you graduated, um, you entered the Sisters of Notre Dame. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I waited a while, um, at least until the following February. Mm. And, um, you know, I had no idea what I was getting into. and. I remember entering, and um, Anne Gormley had entered before me. Your classmate. Six months, mm -hmm. my classmate. And she was, wa the first day I was there, we were walking through this cloister, and I started to talk. She said, <laughs> we don't talk. Mm -hmm. I said, you mean you don't talk here? She said, we don't talk until it's recreation time, and it's not recreation time. I thought, oh my gosh, I don't, didn't know I was getting into this. <laughs> so that was kind of a shock. And even when we were eating, we weren't talking, we were being read to, you know, holy books, inspiring books. So. Um, you know, it was just a totally different experience. <clears throat> and I um, was used to having a family that was full of fun, and uh, we did a lot of things together. I remember when they first came to visit me, they were all jammed into a convertible, and they were laughing, and, and I remember thinking, how can I stay here? Mm -hmm. And I nearly got into that car. Oh. And I remember my mother saying, Margaret, if you want to come home, don't, uh, th uh, don't be ashamed. Just come home. We, we, you're always welcome. And I nearly got into that car, but I didn't. And I remember going into chapel and just crying, thinking, oh gosh, what have I done? <laughs> Sounds like a great life-changing moment. Oh, it was. And mm. you stayed. Mm. And the course of history was different then. <laughs> yes, it was. Mm, very different. Did you ever think you'd come back to Trinity? Did you want to come back to Trinity? Well, I thought that would be a dream come true. Mm -hmm but I never thought I would. How did it happen? Did the sisters assign uh, you? Well, I, when I first made my vows, they sent me to teach at St. Hubert's in Philadelphia. Oh, sure. And lived at Wincote. Well, I was only there six months. And they sent for me at Ilchester to teach Latin. And I was there only six months. And I was told, you're going to Trinity. Mm. So I thought, oh, isn't that great? I mean, I just uh -huh. loved that yeah. idea. And then, of course, they sent me to get my PhD at Catholic, and 
you know, teach English. I was the young sister on the in the English department. You were the youngest in the English yeah. department. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, and I then think probably the youngest in our community. To be here yeah. at Trinity. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you taught for a year or two and became the youngest president. Quite a star. I taught for about uh, five or six years. Then I was sent to Scotland oh. to teach, um, just to get an example of uh, abroad. Mm -hmm. And. Um, um, then, when I was in Scotland, at the end of the year, I got word, you're coming back to be president of Trinity. I thought, oh my gosh, they don't know what they're doing. <laughs> and <laughs> They didn't ask you, they just told you? Yes. <laughs> and those were the days. So I immediately wrote to the provincial and said, you've got the wrong person. The person who should be president is Sister Joan Bland. Uh -huh. She'll get a lot of money for the college and she'll be good. Well, I got a word back, you're coming back to be president. Oh my goodness. So that was it. I, I was like, a, you know, no experience. I was still in my 20s. <laughs> and, <laughs> and luckily, Sister Columbo was vice president. Oh, and yes. she just helped me and stood by me and would tell me, "No, you can't do that," or "Yeah, oh, that would be good to do," or "Why don't you?" Or Sister some, Columba, she yeah. was a great mentor to you. Oh, she was, and she was a great friend. Yeah. What were some of the most important things you learned from her? Uh, first of all, I think. Um, I learned how important it was to be loyal to your friends and to your ideals and principles. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was fiercely loyal in everything and especially to Trinity. Mm -hmm. um, I learned that it was important to speak out if you had different ideas from someone else. Um, and I think I learned also that you could be really tough, but you could be really very loving and affectionate if you need to be, you know. She taught so. you well, Sister Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> she was a great friend. She was a mm. remarkable woman, mm. truly. She was. So when you started as president, it was just at the beginning of the 1960s, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden the baby boomers started coming. Right. And, and they changed a lot, didn't they? Oh, that was, that was an exciting time. And, you know, we, um, we got the land across the street for expansion, 24 acres. We built um, Coverley and uh, Kirby. Um, well, I just, and then we started the library, mm -hmm. built the library. So it was a really exciting time. Then the men's colleges went co ed. Mm -hmm. And that, our enrollment started to go like that. Mm -hmm. So in 1970, we had built up this faculty to take care of this booming enrollment. Well, I had to start giving terminal contracts, which got all the students mad, all the faculty mad, even though they could see the enrollment was going down. So I had like a little um, revolt on my hands in 1970, 71. By the time you came here as a student in seven, well, you came in seventy nineteen seventy 70, fall. Yeah, you we were just getting over that kind of revolt. <laughs> so, except my class wanted to continue the <laughs> revolt, if you remember. <laughs> it wasn't bad though. <laughs> so, Sister Margaret, we were talking about what happened after the men's schools all went co-ed and right. enrollment dropped at Trinity. How did you find out that Georgetown was going to go co-ed? 
Well, um, Father Campbell and I had been talking about um, possibly sharing different courses, mm -hmm. you know, that they would come here and we would go there. And we were in the midst of that. And um, I was talking to Father Campbell this day. He said, oh, we've just announced we're going co-ed. So I said, oh, well, thanks for letting me know so much ahead of time. Really? Because they were starting right away. Really? It was kind of a, a shock. And as I say, we immediately started to see Catholic parents sending their uh, daughters to Catholic co-ed colleges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was really kind of um, scary there yeah. for a while to see our enrollment going down. Did Trinity ever consider going co-ed? It was brought up at the Board of Trustees and we talked about it. I held out and said, well, there are a lot of co-ed um, uh, institutions, Catholics co-ed now, Georgetown's co-ed. I think our hope is staying unique and being a woman's college. Mm -hmm. So we held out for that. And even though, as I say, there were some scary moments, it did pick up and people did, you know, um, come. Right, right. So during those days, even when co-education was going on, you had to deal with the effects of the Second Vatican Council and how oh, the church yes. changed oh, yes. and Catholic colleges were changing. I, <laughs> I was sent, we had what was called a general chapter and I was one of the delegates to this general chapter in Rome where um, we had to look at every facet of our rule and our lifestyle and to see if we needed to change to be more contemporary. So that's when we, um, you know, we did away with the habit. People could be in contemporary dress. Um, um, there were a lot of changes in our lifestyle. We could finally go home for a visit. We couldn't before. Um, so that um, that was a lot of good things happened as a result of that chapter. But I remember the first time that um, I appeared in contemporary dress. And I remember walking down the marble corridor and the students would, you know, they'd nod and then I'd say, good morning. And they'd do a double take and I'd say, Sister Margaret? <laughs> 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 and one student came up to me and said, for the first time I realized you could be my mother. Oh. <laughs> I thought to myself, thank God I'm not. <laughs> Did you have a, a coming out party for the sisters? <laughs> well, believe it or not, people, um, some people wanted to stay uh -huh. in a more subdued habit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we had people tried on black knit suits and uh. other kinds of suits and you know so that we were very very conservative in mm -hmm. what we mm -hmm. you know first started to do mm -hmm. but um then people got their own style and, yeah you know yeah. did their own thing yeah so while the sisters were changing the Catholic colleges were also changing, mm -hmm. and there was a, a meeting of Catholic college presidents out at Land O'Lakes mm -hmm. to declare their independence from mm -hmm. church rule, mm -hmm. and then there was a meeting in Rome with Catholic college presidents, and you went to that meeting, didn't you? Yeah, I was the only woman, and um, I think I've told you this story. Um, when it came time, to use the bathroom, um, there was no bathroom 
for <laughs> women. <laughs> in the Vatican? <laughs> no. We were in this big Vatican hall. So I had to go up to the <laughs> this pompous little Monsignor <laughs> and say, is there a bathroom that I could use? Oh, just a minute. He takes out a key this big and <laughs> leads me <laughs> to this. Well, I guess had been a bishop's bathroom or something. <laughs> so I went in there. So every time I had to go to the bathroom, I had to go up and get this big key and go. <laughs> oh, uh, from the man. Yeah. Yeah. And it also, they didn't know what to do with me. They, they, I'd raise my hand to speak. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't call on me. Mm. And, um, you know, I finally said to Father Ted Hesburgh, you know, they won't call on me. I mean, uh, they just ignore me. He said, well, we'll fix that. So he said, you and I are going to go out to lunch, but we're going to wait and go down the steps when all the limousines are gathered to pick up these little Monsignor and other people to go to lunch. And then I'll introduce you to them. And, um, you know, talk about us going out to lunch. So that's what we did. And after that, because Father Hesburgh had been, you know, taking me to lunch, then they thought nothing of calling on me. It was fine <laughs> to call on me. I could talk. Oh, gosh, that was an experience. Mm. Father Ted Hesburgh. Yeah. Great man. Oh, yes. He yeah. was a good friend to you. Yes, he was. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I met him a year ago. Mm. Um, and I remembered you to him, and he oh. remembered you also. Oh, and, yeah. And uh, I could tell there was a great bond of affection between the two of you. He was a very nice, wonderful yeah. priest. Yeah. Mm. We all need great friends like that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Another thing you did when you were president was change the board of trustees oh, to yeah. a lay board. Mm -hmm. How hard was that to do? We had, I had started having an advisory lay board. Mm -hmm. So the sisters were getting some sort of used to having a lay voice, you know, talk about it. But then, um, you know, our board of trustees, the archbishop was like the honorary chairman, and then we had the provincial, and then we had all these other sisters. So I brought it up to the Board of Trustees, and some of the sisters were very opposed mm. to it. And I had to convince them that it was the way we had to go, that life was changing and Catholic colleges were changing. So um, they finally agreed, and I put people that I felt the sisters were comfortable with from the lay board on the board of trustees for a start, like Jim McFadden, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. remember him? Sure, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And um, so that's how we did it. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, it, it has always been, I think that it's been a very important step. It Absolutely. was an important step. Today, one of the things I treasure most is independent governance mm -hmm. with our own board of trustees. Yeah. And I know mm -hmm. from talking to other presidents that mm -hmm. that is a gift at Trinity. Oh, I know. So thank you, Sister Margaret, for that. <laughs> <laughs> now today we are working on our wonderful new academic center. Oh, right. With all the new science laboratories. Mm. And of course, you wanted, you had a vision for this campus. And, <laughs> and not only the new library, which you completed, and Kirby Hall, and the music and art wing, but you wanted to redo the science building also yes, right. as part of the grand plan. Mm -hmm. When you designed that master plan in 1965, 66, mm -hmm. you built over Michigan Avenue. That's right. <laughs> what were you thinking back then? It was a grand plan. <laughs> well, see, that was in the days, we were right at the height of our booming enrollment. Yeah. 
And so we were going to put, you know, use that 24 acres over there as a campus. And then my hope was that we would be able to close Michigan Avenue. And of course, people were like horrified at this whole thing <laughs> when I came out with that. But um, uh, it's, it's, I remember after I got out of being president and I was away for a year and then I came back and they were selling the 24 mm -hmm. acres, which I thought was kind of Sad. crazy to do. Crazy. And they were selling it for what I thought was, you know, much less than what we paid for it. Right. It was right. so silly. Right. So It was underwater. And that was the time when Columbus said to me, look, you've had your chance. You're out of it now. Don't even, just let it pass over. Don't even <laughs> think about it. <laughs> Sister Columba helped you again. Yes, yes. But it's too bad the Trinity had to sell that land. I know. We could use it today. Oh, I know. Yeah. Mm. But our plans for the new science building finally bring some piece of that. Yes. Of your mm -hmm. vision to fruition. Yes. Because it's been 75 years since mm -hmm. the current science building opened. Mm -hmm. So we're excited about that. I was in the first class to use the present science building oh. in 41. And now, every day, I go up to the fourth floor and look at the windows, you know, yeah. so I could see the progress of that building. It really is coming along quickly. It's a great building, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. It's going to be Tonight. marvelous. Yes, it is. It's yeah, a, yeah. Yeah, they've got all the... The steel beams up now. Mm. We're excited about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. We're glad we could do it. Oh, so am I. And we're mm. grateful to alumni who have supported us, mm -hmm. many of whom you started cultivating. Mm -hmm. Did you enjoy fundraising when you had to do it? Um, well, I remember I, I thought it was going to be an awful job. Yeah. And I remember saying that to the Archbishop. The Archbishop said to me, how do you like your new job? And I said, well, I don't like the idea of fundraising. He said, if you think something is worthwhile, mm -hmm. fundraising is a privilege. Mm -hmm. So with that kind of in the back of my mind, I got used to, mm -hmm. you know, asking people for money. And you are responsible for some of the great benefactors of Trinity, like Marcella Seymour, for whom mm. Seymour Court is named, mm -hmm. and Mary Goubeau, who restored the chapel. Mm -hmm. Great women, thanks to you. Barbara Glenn. Barbara Glenn. She was one of my students. And so. Barbara Glenn uh, named the gymnasium after you, so your name is there. <laughs> The Margaret Clayton Hi. Arena and Barbara and John have uh, also been great benefactors for our new building, too, and we're grateful. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Mm. And, of course, Joan Payton, our great yes. benefactor, is very grateful to you. She was in school after you, um, mm. but she knows how important you are in Trinity's history, oh, so well. that's great. Now, much has changed. Oh, since it has. since then, since I was a student, we didn't oh. give you too much trouble, did we? No, you really didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and you used to come in, and you know, you were editor of the paper. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes I would <laughs> lay into you about an article or something. <laughs> you wished I had learned better. <laughs> But as you've seen the changes come over Trinity, you know, what, what do you think about our future now and how all of this is going? Well, I think our mission has remained unchanged. I mean, we're reaching out to women who may not have had an opportunity for a good education with a focus on them they're important, and just as those first women who came to Trinity in 1900, I mean, these, those women needed a place where they could get a good, solid Catholic education, liberal arts education, and these people today need the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I, 
I think um, I think it's it's great to see how the the students develop from their freshman year to senior year, and some of these women who have been the first in their family to go to college go out and get these wonderful positions. Right. right. It's it's very inspiring to me. We've had a great deal of success. We really And, and even more is coming. I mm. just learned today that one of our students has received a graduate fellowship at American University in Chemistry. Oh, great. And another one is going to be doing undergraduate research this summer at Harvard. I know. And That's others wonderful. are going to Hopkins and Baylor. Mm. In fact, the success of our students is a tribute to the success of our faculty also. That's, that's true. And our faculty today are very dedicated. But they wouldn't be able to do that if you hadn't had the vision when you were president. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Well, you've got the vision. Oh, I don't. I'm just carrying on what <laughs> I learned from my <laughs> president. <laughs> so, Sister Margaret, one of the topics in the news today is the closing of Sweetbriar College, which is very sad for those women and for their history and tradition. I get asked a lot about how that happened at Sweetbriar and would it have happened at Trinity? And I said, well, it could have happened to us, but we had great leadership in the past with you and we've persisted through, but what do you think it might mean for the future of women's colleges and for Trinity? Well, I, am, <clears throat> I do think that, um, you know, Sweetbriar was in a rural uh, place. Um, their endowment, it seemed to me, was, you know, was larger than ours, I think. By many factors, yes. yes. So I had a little hard time uh, understanding why they felt compelled to close at this moment. But I suppose it was, they, they felt they weren't getting enough students mm -hmm. and um, the rural place. Mm -hmm. But as far as women's colleges, I think the ones who have a real mission and are in some sort of a vital uh, environment, mm -hmm. like we are, I think, here in Washington, we're in a wonderful uh, environment. And um, like in those in New York, I think, are the same way in Boston. And um, I think many will disappear or go co-ed, but I think some strong ones will last. Mm -hmm. And we hope that will be Trinity in yes, among them. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what we're working for today. Right. There's another thread in the news today that liberal arts colleges are no longer viable and that students should only go to college to get a job, get a job. <laughs> and that the worth of a major depends on how much money you make afterwards. Uh. What would you say to the politicians and, mm. and editorial writers who take that position? Well, I would say a liberal arts education is far more valuable as far as finding a position uh, that requires um, writing, uh, speaking well, being able to analyze. I think all the skills that are needed to really um, go in, be ready for any job comes from liberal arts. Whereas if you prepare for a specific job, who knows how long that job is going to last. Mm -hmm. And then you have to start over again. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm a firm believer in the liberal arts um, as far as preparing, well, it's a kind of a cliche, preparing for life and being able to adjust to change. One final question. Pope Francis is coming to Washington I know. in the fall. I know. I if you had a chance to meet him and talk to him, what would you say to him? I would say, I really love you, Pope Francis. You are great. You're just what's needed for the church. And now come down and stop at Trinity.
<laughs> Amen to that, sister. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Sister Margaret, so You're much welcome. for doing this interview. You're this is welcome. wonderful. And thanks yeah. to everybody for watching. Yes. We'll be back with more conversations with presidents in the future. <laughs>